Hey guys, Truna here. Before we get into the video, I wanted to talk about something that I'm planning on doing here for Crossover Breaker. Um, I am planning on doing a live stream on YouTube. Uh, when the set comes out and I pick up my case, uh, here's what I'm doing. I'm going to open up a case, either a case and maybe even a couple of boxes, um, something of that nature, and I really want you guys to be a part of it. So... Please tune in for that. I will have a specific date and time as we get closer, uh, probably around like the 23rd. I'll know more of a specific date and time of when I'm going to be doing the stream. But I wanted to get the word out there that I'm planning on doing my first ever stream on YouTube. So full, no expectations of viewers. Uh, I only have about 250 subs, but fully understand that there is a likely scenario where I'm just streaming to nobody. But... I want to get the word out there, so maybe that doesn't happen. So if you guys want to come in and talk to me live, you can just say, hey, true, so-and-so, and yada, 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 and we'll, we'll shoot the crap while I'm streaming. So anyway, guys, uh, please enjoy the video and be on the lookout for that. Peace. Hey, guys, true now here. Welcome back to the channel. Um, welcome to the final episode of Exploring the Meta in the month of November. Um, it's been a fun series. I've had a lot of enjoyment with it. Hope you guys have too. Hope you guys have, um, enjoyed all the profiles and the, uh, games and everything we've done. Um, and, uh, just overall the experience with it. It's been fun testing out new decks weekly and everything. Um, I've had a blast with it gotten to just get out of the rut playing one deck the whole month. Um, got to broaden my horizons, learn a lot more about the game and interactions and everything like that, so it really helps me out going a long way as a player. So I want to encourage you guys, if you have access to a thing like Dueling Book, um, Master Duel, uh, Omega, like, play them. Because if you want to improve as a player, these really help you enable your ability to learn interaction and learn the timing of cards and things like that. So, um, overall, very insightful, very, very much a fun thing to do. So maybe we'll come back to it in later months, maybe next year, in 2025. Um, but yeah, it's been been a fun time. So, um, I know I told you guys at the beginning of this week that I was probably going to do Fire King, Snake Eye, Fainsmith as my alternative in matches 3 and 4, but I decided ultimately to go with something that was really fun to me before Snake Eye even came up, and that was Fire King, Dogmatica. That was like my second favorite deck in the game at the time, and I don't know if you guys all remembered when Fire Kings came out, you were either like pure Fire King with a whole bunch of non-engine, or you were like Fire King Tri Brigade or Fire King Dogmatica. And I was always Fire King Dogmatica. Um, it was my favorite kind of style of way to play the deck. And so I wanted to give it a try. And as you guys will see in the video, I had a lot of fun with it. The interactions are cool. Probably got my butt kicked a lot, <laughs> which I did. But um, it was an overall fun time. I really enjoyed this version over Fire King Snake Eye. Even though Fire King Snake Eye is like five times more powerful, um, this is still a fun deck to play. So, in this version, uh, you play three chicken, um, it's your starter, well these two are your starters. So you either play three bird chicken lady, or three chicken, and then one Arvada and one of Barong in this because you have the room for it, and it automatically gets you a search, which is always pivotal. Sometimes you just end up with a bunch of Fire King stuff in your hand. He helps you get Karen in your hand. And I only played two Karen in three of this, where it could be easily two and three, but I wanted to max out my starters. Uh, for Dogmatica now, I do include the Florida Lease because your opponent does special summon a lot of extra deck monsters on your turn. So it's really easy to drop it. And the Wanted still because this helps you get to Chicken. If not, it's a great extender. It always makes your opponent also try to interrupt Wanted or this. Then you can just summon and go off with Fire King stuff. And then non-engine's pretty simplistic. This could be Nibiru or Droll. 
I just haven't chose to go with Fenrir because I've been having a lot of fun with Fenrir lately. So. Uh, three Charmy, of course. If you wanted to do a budget version, again, just put Droll or Nibiru in and you're just as well off. It's not as nearly as powerful, but you're just as well off. And then, of course, three Imperm, three Impulse. Extra deck does change up a slight bit. I did go back to the Axis Code line is what I originally did, but then I took out a lot of it for um, the, what do you call it, Want or Nadir Servant stuff. So I was playing Sunlight with Selene and Axis Code, but I instead decided to go with Garua, Entis, and then the two Tribrigade Monsters for my Nadir Servant package stuff. Um, also for the side deck, it's nothing really too noteworthy. I mean, you play three Charmy, three Nib for going second. Also, I have a lot of board wipes, and then just my predicated going first stuff. It's just stop my opponent throwing on something. If I'm in the mirror match, I'll probably just take these out, and I'll put in three uh, Perilia, and then these two right here. Um, but nine times out of ten, if I'm going second, I'm taking out a lot of my hand trap stuff and just putting in a lot of this stuff. So overall, great fun deck. I have a great time with it. I like this more than Fire King Snake Eye has Amina, but at a locals level, yeah, sure, you'll top with it. If you're a great skilled player with it and you're a good pilot with it, you'll top with it. Um, hold on. Okay. Sorry about that, got interrupted. Um, so let's go ahead and finish out the profile with the rankings on this. Um, for attack, I want to give it a solid 4 out of 5. I think it's simply busted when you can just go off. <laughs> Easily put AK damage on board, no matter what. Um, defense, I want to give it like a 3 out of 5, just because you don't play as much non-engine. Uh, but you are very resilient with Kirin, with Karunix, things like that, so maybe, actually I'll give that a 4 to 5. Recovery, probably a good, like, 3.5 out of 5. Um, it's very easy to recover if you have Fire King Ellen on board, or if you draw Fenrir, anything like that. Skill expression, definitely this deck is like a 4 to 5. A really good pilot is going to be damn near unbeatable, even in this format. Um, just because they're going to know the ins and outs of Garunix timing, Karen timing, all of those things, that nature. Like, good luck. <laughs> um, and finally, overall, I want to give this deck, like, 3.5, almost 4 out of 5. Like, I feel like if people more if more people had hopped on it rather than Snake Eye Fire King, just because Snake Eye Fire King is that much more just powerful on its own, nobody really tried this. But if you give a good pilot this deck, like uh, I want to say this deck could easily win a regional. Um, might make a couple of tweaks, but at least top. So. Very solid. I feel like it's like Tip of Rogue. Um, almost considered Tier 2. So that's just my thought process on it. So let me know what you guys think. Again, I really enjoyed anybody who stayed tuned for the whole month of November with this deck. Or with this uh, thing that I did with exploring the meta. If you guys want to see me do it again. Um, man, you just gotta like the videos and comment on them. That you want me to keep doing this for other decks as... The future rolls out future in the game so um but that'll be it for me guys signing out for november with exploring the meta it's been a fun trip please like comment subscribe be kind be respectful and i'll see you guys in the next video peace Put up on the pedal.